Hi there, and thank you for joining us in our series, Pauline and Her Three Sisters. In these episodes, we'll be watching as Pauline makes some unique dishes whilst using ingredients that stem from her indigenous heritage. Pauline's hometown of Fort Erie is also the home of the Fort Erie Native Friendship Center, where she spent some of her time growing up. Over the years, she has practiced and honed her skills in the Friendship Center's kitchen and is now preparing for a career in the food industry. Growing up in Fort Erie has always been interesting. Um, there's always so much to do and like so many different people to learn things from. Um, I always had like a good time. The Native Center has always been here. I've mm -hmm. always been around here. Um, same within the summer, there's the French Festival usually, and we used to go as kids. We used to have a lot of fun. Fort Erie has always been a, a good um, settled town for like young families to grow up. Okay. And I started cooking when I was a really young kid, just in the kitchen with my mom, doing baked goods or helping with dinner, like any little thing I could help with. I was kind of just like in the kitchen helping. Oh, that's um, wonderful. And it's still like that. I go to my mom's and I help her cook dinner sometimes, mm -hmm. and it's always so much fun. And when I was in grade eight, I decided I was like, I'm gonna go to college. I'm gonna go to school and become a chef. And she has done just that. In the end, I get to taste what Pauline has made with her three sisters. I can't wait to get started. Mm, I wonder what she's cooking first. Hello, my name is Pauline Cotter. Today we're gonna to be making a bison burger on a bannock bun with bacon, onion, jam, and blue cheese. And to go with that, we're gonna be making a three sister salad. So we're gonna start with the prep for the three sister salad just to get our vegetables out of the way. We just cut the squash open. We're gonna scoop out the insides. It's always been like a dream of mine to be able to showcase um, my culture. And since my main talent is cooking, that is where I kind of picked up on it. And working with indigenous ingredients and indigenous food helps me bring my culture into my main hobby and basically what I love to do. So we're just gonna chop up the squash into like bite-sized pieces for our salad. They don't all have to be perfect. They can look however the way you want them to look, as long as they're just nice little bite-sized pieces. So with green beans, we just wanna take off the little stem that's here. Not much waste, just a, the little tiny stem. So our three sisters are corn, beans, and squash. They are labeled our three sisters because of how well that they grow together and how they help each other grow. The corn acts as a, a stabilizer for the beans for the vines to climb up. And our squash, with their big leafy leaves, they cover the soil so that they can have as much nutrients and water that they need. Our three sisters are medicines. And that's what I've always been told, that real food is medicine. So now we're just gonna peel the rest of our corn. So today we're using yellow corn, because it's in season, but also because our indigenous white corn, white hominy, is really hard to get. And Pauline is telling the truth when she says it's hard to find. I'm waiting for one of my nephews right now to bring me some back from my reserve. You know, the Friendship Center saw this need and felt it was time to expand the Three Sisters Garden and grow their own white corn, beans, and squash. Well, when COVID-19 first hit and I was looking at the science of the, around the issue of COVID-19, I started to think about disruptions to food supply chains and what the Friendship Center would need to do in terms of the long-term impact of a two-year pandemic. And I know from our traditions that working with Mother Earth can actually help raise the spirits of the people. So then I started to think, well, if we can actually get the staff to come in once a week safely, socially distancing, they can work in various parts of the Friendship Center and we can create a community garden. We can expand a community garden. We've started with our traditional Tuscarora white corn and we've planted other things as well at this point. We got in touch with a local organic farmer who's a good friend of the Friendship Center 
and we just started planting. And I'm happy to say our gardens are doing great this year. My name is Debbie Sexsmith, and uh, we're here at my farm, Sexsmith Farm. Mine and my mother's, of course, Marcia. Through generations, I'm the uh, fifth generation to uh, farm here um, in Ridgeway. Uh, we have 65 acres, and uh, Six Mile Creek goes through the farm. We have a wood lot and uh, quite a few animals. Hello, girls. Look at these little ears. They're, it's, uh, they're part La Mancha. The relationship with the Fort Erie Native Friendship Center goes back at least 25 or maybe even more years. Um, they first started coming out to the farm uh, with the Aboriginal Head Start program and would spend a little time uh, with the horses and uh, sometime out in the garden and, and planting. Jennifer asked if I would uh, help with the garden. The first thing that, that uh, I was asked to do was to help work on this, this garden and see if we could make something there. It's been a great opportunity, I think, to, uh, to kind of deepen our relationship, I guess, a bit, or, or, and, and learn together. My name is Carl Doxeter, I'm the Kije Anishinaabe Neen. I'm a Kind Man Coordinator. It's a program that really is about men actively seeking out how to limit the amount of violence against women in our community. So this will be three years that I've been working with corn. We planted some last year. Uh, that we didn't, we didn't plant enough, the squirrels and robins ate it. So hopefully this is the first year that we actually get to, to braid our own corn right here at the Fort Erie Native Friendship Center. The thing, the thing that guided our layout this year was the space that we use. So we, I think what we tried to do before was to have neat little mounds. So I think last year, like we had like eight perfect mounds and they were beautiful and they all had one stock of corn and, and it was great, but it wasn't enough. So what we're trying this year is, is we're trying more. I was taught that you're supposed to plant enough for the animals as well. We're not supposed to put fences up and you're not supposed to sort of shoo them away. I mean, you can limit the amount of animals that come in because they'll clean you right out. But that really the best thing to do is to plan enough for everyone, and including our brothers and sisters in the natural world. They're probably, the uh, even just the setup itself, like I think we had between six and eight people that were working for about a week just to shovel, to turn it over, to weed the old garden, to, to move the border around, to, to shovel the new dirt, to mix in peat, uh, manure, topsoil, to mix it all together, and then, and then just to prep it. Uh, just just to get it started I'm pretty happy with the garden. It's uh, you know I don't really know what I'm doing which is part of the fun of, of the process that we're it, I almost feel like I have a relationship with with the corn because I'm learning about the corn the corn's learning about me so there's this level of interaction that's, that's neat I, so far so good uh, if nothing else the mental peace that I get just coming out here and watering the garden and weeding the garden and spending time with it is, has been beautiful for me and I hope that that ends up in reflected in ending up with beautiful corn. Last week, okay. last Thursday I planted, so they're already up. And who is it? Uh, I own Anderson used to say, from one bean, one seed, you're gonna get 116 beans. Well, I think we're doing wonderful. And there's never, when you're learning and, and when you're committing to the garden, I think there's a commitment there. And the garden shows it. Like it, it's, uh, the squash all came up. The corn looks fantastic. It's a little crowded. Um, knee high by the 4th of July, it was the rule. And the corn actually is, is way higher than that. So it looks really good. <laughs> it's one happy garden. We were great agriculturalists. We were great 
uh, hunters and gatherers, and we know this land more than we think we do. Colonization has not gotten so deep into us that we don't remember our traditional ways. And to actually utilize that to the wellness of the people, and not just the physical wellness, but the mental and the emotional wellness as well, and the spiritual wellness of the people. We'll, we are whole people. It's never just about growing corn. It's about actually working with Mother Earth, acknowledging that energy of that plant life brings to us so that we can actually connect in a way with our food and we can connect with Mother Earth and bring that gratitude into everyday living. Now I can understand why Pauline is using the yellow corn today. But if Carl and Debbie are successful, Pauline will have white corn to use for years to come. Today we're just gonna take the yellow corn off the cob. So we're just gonna cut it in half so it makes it a little bit easier to take off. And we're just gonna take our knife and we're gonna get as close to the core as we can to get all of the kernels off. We're gonna saute it first and we're gonna season it. And when it's ready and everything else is ready, we're gonna throw everything together and we're gonna toss the salad with a homemade balsamic vinaigrette. So now we're just gonna take our basil and we're gonna chop it up a little fine to add to our salad and some for our burgers that we're gonna be making. Basil's probably one of my favorite herbs just because of how, how it smells and how it goes well with pretty much everything. Um, and it's so pretty, it's, it has a nice color to it and it's so versatile. We're just gonna chop up some chives to add to our, our burgers when we get to mixing them to give it just a nice mild onion flavor. We're just gonna pull some thyme off of their sprigs here. Yeah, so this is the thyme in here. So I started working with Debbie Sacksmith when I was about 12 years old on a volunteer basis oh, on, wow. on her farm. So my uncle was actually um, a farm ham at the time, so he would go and help um, bale hay, chop wood, whatever whatever they needed help with. And I would take along and volunteer and just go and help whatever they needed, pulling weeds, helping with uh, loading the hay, feeding the horses and all that kind of stuff. So anything you do on a farm is really what I got to experience and it was really cool. I had a lot of fun with it, especially being at such a young age and being able to be exposed to that kind of lifestyle. Okay, so we're just gonna slice our onions for our bacon onion jam that we're gonna make for our burger. So we're just gonna slice this up pretty thick. Ontario grown garlic is probably my favorite of any garlic you can get. It's always so fresh and delicious and it always has such a nice aroma to it. We're gonna chop this up pretty fine. Um, we're gonna add it to our burger mix when we make that. So ground bison is buffalo meat, for those that, that don't know. It's a very uh, gamey type of meat, and it's eaten traditionally by a lot of indigenous people. Okay, so now since our meat is a little bit more broken up now, we're gonna add in our garlic and herbs that we chopped up earlier. So we have garlic, thyme, basil, and chives in here. This is gonna help bring out its natural gaminess as well as add different um, different flavor profiles to it so that it's not just a meat flavor and you get a little bit of garlic and just a little bit of saltiness to it. Add an egg to help it bind together. The egg's gonna help our, our, my, our, our meat bind together and stay together while we form it and cook it. So we're just gonna form our patties now. I have this um, this little ring cookie cutter type thing. Um, and we're just gonna grab some of our meat and we're gonna press it in there. So we're just gonna slice up this bacon. Um, it's gonna go into our bacon onion jam that's gonna go on top of our bison burger. So the bacon onion jam has bacon, our onions, and a little bit of brown sugar, some seasoning, 
um, and a little bit of balsamic vinegar. So that's just going to be a nice little condiment for our burger and it's going to add some, some flavor to it. So now we're going to make our bannock. Bannock is a bread recipe that was developed by indigenous people. It was developed by indigenous people because all of its ingredients are cheap and affordable. Um, and back then, when settlers came and things changed for us, things weren't always the best. So families did what they could, and they used what they had available. So things like flour, water, baking powder, oil, and salt were very easily available for them. So they would use that and they would make bread out of it that would last them and their families. The bannock's gonna be used for our burger buns today. I went with a bannock recipe because it's easy and it's healthier because it can be baked off instead of fried on like scones and fry bread. So we're just gonna knead it a little bit on the table here. So we add a little bit of flour to the table so it doesn't stick. We're just gonna fold it in together and push it into itself. I'm just gonna flatten this out a bit, move it around so I can cut some buns out of it. So I'm gonna be cutting out the bannock in circular form just so that we can actually use it for our buns for our burger. And there you go, you've got your little bun ready to go and we're gonna bake that in the oven. Now that we're done all of our prep, our buns are made, our vegetables are cut, and our patties are made, we are gonna move over to the stove and we're gonna start cooking everything off. So we're gonna fry up our bacon, add it to the pan. So we're just gonna cook our bacon until it's crispy. Once it gets crispy, we're gonna take it out of the pan and we're gonna add in our onions and fry them up in the bacon fat. And then we'll add the sugar and let them caramelize. And then we'll add in the bacon again and let it sit and cook until it becomes a jam. So now that our onions have softened up, we're gonna add in the sugar. I took the bacon out of the pan and set it aside so it would stop cooking. And we'll add it again in a minute. We're gonna add a half a cup of water and our cooked bacon. And we're gonna let this cook until it becomes thick and jam-like. So earlier we put in our, our bannock buns and our squash for our salad. We put them in at 350 for about 15 minutes. Okay, so I'm just testing to see if the squash is cooked. So I'm just gonna use the back of my spoon here. You can use a fork and just see how tender it is just by squishing it or poking it with a fork or a knife. Nice and cooked. We're gonna let it cool now. So now that we've cooked this down and it's nice and it's nice and thick and it looks sauce-like, we're gonna let it cool down. And once we're ready, once we have our burgers cooked, we can add it to our, our plate. So we're just gonna add our bison burgers to the pans. So I've coated the pan with a little bit of olive oil and we're just gonna add our burger. Give it a little press down here in the pan. We're just gonna cook our burgers over medium heat until they're done. Bison burgers are a little bit more fatty than you would find in um, in a beef burger, just because of um, how the, the the animal is grown. It doesn't have the uh, the, the same diet as farm fed animals, um, so of course it's gonna be a little bit more fattier. Um, but it has so much more taste and texture to it. <laughs> okay so we're gonna mix our salad now while our burgers rest so we're gonna add in our roasted squash our corn and our green beans 
We're gonna lightly season that with some salt and pepper. Add in our basil. And we're gonna drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil and some balsamic vinegar. We're just gonna take our tongs and we're gonna mix it up. And that is ready to go. Okay, so we're gonna cut open our bannock buns that we made for our burgers. Oh, look how nice that looks inside. And on the bottom, we're gonna we're gonna add our burger. On top of our burger, we're gonna add some of our onion bacon jam. Mm, that smells so good. And just a little bit of crumbled blue cheese. And that's it, that's our burger there. Okay, so I'm gonna cut our burger in half for some presentation. Oh yeah, look at that. We're gonna add some of this delicious salad onto the plate as well. Give it a little pop of color. And there we have it, our bison burger with our three sisters salad. So now that the food's done, we're gonna be trying our bison burger with the bacon onion jam and our blue cheese with our three sisters salad. Did you say bacon onion jam? I did. So would you like to take your first bite? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that jam is amazing. <laughs> oh my God. Instead of having like a relishy kind of taste, it's sweet, but... It's savory too, because mm -hmm. there's the, the oil from the bacon mm -hmm. and the flavor from the onion. And you can taste yeah. the onion and the bacon, just kind of, oh, that's fabulous. And what, and what is this in the front? This is our three sister salad. Mm -hmm. So it has acorn squash, green beans, and yellow corn. Mm -hmm. And it's been tossed with a little bit of balsamic uh, vinegar and a little bit of salt, pepper, and mm -hmm. some olive oil. Oh my goodness. More. That's mm -hmm. really good. Very fresh and crisp and... The green beans are fresh too, right? Yes. You can taste them, they're just uh, delicious. This is really good. Thank you. So three sisters. Well, girl, I'm gonna have to get the recipe for everything that you've made because uh, I think I died and went to heaven here. <laughs> this is absolutely wonderful. Join us in our next episode where Pauline will be creating a dish of fried trout with a strawberry and spinach salad. Oh man, that dish just brought me back to earlier times.